Hello everyone, my name is Radu and today I'm going to talk about simulation sound arguments for learning with errors and applications to key dependent message security against chosen ciphertext attack. And this is joint work with Benoit Liber, Koan Guen and Alain Pasleg. In this talk I'm going to focus on our main result, which is a generic compiler that works for the same language. And in the simple form, this compiler takes as input the Trapdoor Sigma protocol and outputs a multi-theorem non-interactive zero-knowledge argument system that achieves zero-knowledge, uh, statistical zero-knowledge in the common random stream model. We can upgrade this compiler to take as input a Trapdoor Sigma protocol and to produce an unbounded simulation sound music. A key feature of our transformation is that it uh, works for the same language in the sense that the resulting music works, music works for the same uh, underlying language as the initial Trader Sigma protocol. And our compiler is direct in the sense that it doesn't have to go through some expensive uh, reduction to some MP-complete language. Moreover, we can make the security proof of the unbounded simulation soundness tight in the sense that the security loss of the reduction is independent of the number of queries that the adversary makes to the simulation oracle. And finally, we can instantiate our compiler uh, under the LWE assumption and we can do so without contradicting any possibility results from the literature. And this is because our resulting NISEC either achieves non-adaptive uh, soundness or it works for trapdoor languages. Uh, another result that we obtain using our compiler uh, is that we can instantiate the Nauer Jung transformation under the learning with error assumption in a direct manner. And this gives us uh, the most efficient LWE based KDM CCA2 security, public key, secure public key encryption that we know so far. Let's start by recalling what non-interactive zero-knowledge arguments are. Uh, assume that we have a prover uh, that wants to convince a verifier of the validity of some statement. We say that the statement X is true if it belongs to some language L and uh, the prover also knows a witness W that certifies the fact that the statement is true. Uh, for instance, you can think of the statement X as being a mathematical proof, for instance, and uh, the witness in this case would be the actual proof of the theorem. So the prover wants to convince the verifier that the statement is true, uh, and he wants to do so without revealing anything about the witness W, except that the statement is true. And in the non-interactive uh, setting, the prover uh, wants to do so by only sending one message to the verifier, and he is not allowed. Uh, he's not allowed to further interact with the verifier. More formally, uh, such a system has to also satisfy three requirements. The first one is completeness, uh, which uh, states that the uh, verifier must always uh, be convinced of the validity of the statement as long as it interacts with an honest prover. Uh, zero knowledge uh, means it just means that uh, the verifier does not learn anything else about the witness except the fact that the statement X is true. And this intuition is uh, captured 
by the existence of a simulator, which uh, is able to simulate proofs without the knowledge of the witness. And those proofs, uh, the simulated ones, are indistinguishable, indistinguishable from uh, honestly generated proofs in the eyes of the adversary. And finally, such a system has to provide soundness, which means that no cheating prover should be able to convince a verifier of the validity of a false statement. So a false statement is just a statement X that does not belong to the language L. Uh, Non-interactive zero-knowledge argument systems are uh, really useful uh, in cryptography as they can be used to construct group signatures or ring signatures or uh, public key encryption that is secure against chosen ciphertext attacks. And uh, one way to obtain uh, CCA security for public key encryption is to use Naur-Jung double encryption transformation, which uh, takes as input a uh, chosen plain text uh, a public key encryption key which is secure against chosen plain text attack and combines it with a non-interactive zero-knowledge proof system and uh, yields a public key encryption scheme which is secure under, under chosen ciphertext attack. And the transformation is quite simple and it involves two instantiate instances of the uh, in CPA secure public key encryption scheme. So we generate two key pairs uh, and a non-interactive zero knowledge argument system for the language, which certifies that the same message M has been encrypted with uh, the first public key and the second public key. And to encrypt the message M under the Nauer Jung transformation, we just encrypt the same message uh, with the different public keys and compute a proof using our NISEC that certifies the fact that the same message M has been encrypted in both ciphertexts. Uh, Sahai so showed that if we replace the non-interactive zero-knowledge argument system with uh, an ISIC that achieves simulation soundness, instead of regular soundness, we can improve the result by having CCA2 security. And a similar argument shows that uh, if we use key-dependent message security, uh, against uh, which is secure against chosen plain, te plain, te plain text attacks with unbounded simulation sound NISEX, uh, we get KDM CCA2 security. In a simulation sound NISEX, uh, no cheating prover should be able to produce a valid proof for a false statement despite the fact that uh, he has access to an oracle that simulates proofs. So the, in this setting, the prover is allowed to make only one oracle query uh, to an input of his choosing to which he, the oracle replies with the simulated proof for that statement. And even with this extra information that the oracle provides, the prover should not be able to produce any uh, false, uh, any valid proofs on false statements. In the simulate, in the unbounded simulation setting, uh, the prover is allowed to query the oracle polynomially many times. The Fiat Shamir heuristic is a very well known technique that. Uh, can be applied to interactive protocols to obtain non-interactive protocols. For instance, if we start with a three-move interactive protocol uh, in which the prover sends the first message A and the verifier 
uh, sends a random challenge E, to which the prover replies with a response Z. We can make this protocol non-interactive by replacing the random challenge of the verifier with the evaluation of a hash function on the input X and the first message A. And it can be proved that if we start with a Sigma protocol, which is a three-move interactive protocol, and we model the hash function as a random oracle, we get a, a non-interactive zero-knowledge argument system. Uh, Sigma protocols are just three-move interactive protocols that satisfy uh, the three requirements of completeness, special zero-knowledge, and special soundness. Completeness, uh, as before, uh, is the property that uh, the verifier should always accept honestly generated interactions with the prover. And special zero knowledge refers to the fact that the verifier should not learn anything about the witness W that certifies that the statement is in the language. Uh, this is formalized uh, with the help of a simulator which generates, uh, which simulates transcripts which are uh, indistinguishable from honestly generated transcripts. And finally, the special soundness property uh, states that for any false statement X and any first message A, there is at most one uh, challenge E, which is called a bad challenge, for which an accepting, accepting transcript exists. Notice that this uh, last property implies the fact that for all challenges, except one, uh, a cheating prover should not be able to produce a valid transcript because it actually does not exist. So when the challenge is uniformly randomly sampled, uh, a cheating prover should not be able to produce an accepting transcript almost always. Uh, trapdoor sigma protocols are just sigma protocols for which the bad challenge function or the bad challenge uh, input E is efficiently computable with uh, the help of some trapdoor sigma uh, tau sigma. The Fiat Shamir heuristic can actually be instantiated without the use of uh, the random oracle model, and this has been proved in some recent works of uh, Canetti et al. and Pikert and Shenyan. And uh, in this work, they show that you can start with a trapdoor sigma protocol, and instead of using random oracles, you can just use the class of hash functions called correlation intractable hash functions, which yield non-interactive zero-knowledge argument systems uh, without the use of random oracle. And in fact, in fact, Pikert and Shenyan showed that we can build correlation intractable hash functions uh, just assuming the uh, LWE problem. And one consequence of this fact is that we can get non-interactive zero-knowledge uh, argument systems uh, under the LWE assumption for all NP languages, which is a nice result. We are now ready to discuss our results in a little more detail. Our main result is a generic compiler that takes as input a trapdoor sigma protocol for some trapdoor language L and transforms it into an unbounded simulation sound music for the same underlying language L. Uh, before our work, the way to do this was to apply general uh, NISIC techniques to obtain unbounded simulation soundness. But these techniques uh, require uh, to go through some expensive uh, reductions to some NP-complete languages. For example, uh, we can apply Fiat Shamir to the Trapdoor Sigma protocol to obtain single theorem NISEC, after which we can apply the OR trick of FLS 
and the transformation of the Santis et al to actually obtain unbounded simulation soundness for the initial language L. Unfortunately, such a transformation would requires the reduction a reduction to an MP complete language L prime, which is different from the language L with which we have started with. And this this can be expensive. Instead, our compiler is a direct one uh, in the sense that it avoids these reductions to MP-complete languages. And on top of this, uh, our compiler uh, preserves the language in the sense that uh, the resulting language is the same as the uh, language of the initial Sigma protocol that we have started with. We also obtain uh, tight security for the proof of the unbounded simulation soundness and our compiler can be actually instantiated using standard learning with errors assumption. From a technical point of view, our compiler uh, requires the use of correlation intractable hash functions, uh, equi equivocable lossy encryption, which is a technique that uh, Damgard used in Eurocrypt 2000. We also use admissible hash functions and uh, one-time signatures. As I said before, we start with a trapdoor sigma protocol for some trapdoor language L. And uh, we start the uh, transformation by encrypting the interactive prover's first message, A prime, using a form of encryption called lossy encryption with equivocable lossy mode. Such an encryption scheme assumes that there are two ways or two modes in which we can generate the keys, an injective mode and a lossy mode. In the injective mode, ciphertexts are actually commitments to the messages, whereas in the lossy modes, ciphertexts are equivocable, which means that any ciphertext can be explained as the encryption of any message of our choosing. For instance, in this slide, given a ciphertext A, which is initially thought as the encryption of the message A prime, can actually be explained as the encryption of another message A second using the open algorithm. And this algorithm uh, returns a value R second, which is just the, which is uh, randomness which we can use to explain A as the encryption of A second. Now in the next step we make the trapdoor sigma protocol non-interactive by uh, using the Fiat Shamir trick and uh, for this we compute the challenge randomness E with uh, correlation intractable hash functions and in the final step, uh, we compute the response of the interactive prover uh, just as in the interaction. And the prover sends to the verifier the initial uh, message A prime, the final message Z, and the randomness R prime, which was used to encrypt A prime. Notice that the verifier is actually able to compute A by encrypting A prime with the randomness R prime and the public key. And after that, you can compute E just by applying the correlation intractable hash functions on top of the statement X and the, uh, the commitment A. Uh, the uh, the idea for how the, uh, our simulator works is the following. Uh, notice that the simulator does, doesn't actually know the witness W. And this means that we cannot use the prover to generate the first message of the interactive protocol. Instead, 
uh, we just encrypt a dummy message and we use that to compute the randomness or, or the challenge randomness by applying the correlation intractable hash function on, on top of this and the statement x. And again, since the simulator does not know the, uh, the witness w, we cannot use the interactive prover to generate the final message of the interactive protocol. Instead, we use the zero knowledge simulator of the trapdoor sigma protocol to generate the first message a prime and the final message z. And to make everything consistent, we have to explain the initial encryption of the dummy message as the encryption of A prime with some randomness R prime. And finally, we send A prime, Z and R prime to the verifier. And notice that the uh, using glossy ciphertext in the simulation is uh, crucially exploited in our uh, construction. Uh, as I've said before, uh, uh, the simulator heavily relies on uh, using the lossy mode of the lossy encryption. And in the proof of the simulation soundness, we actually switch to injective keys. And to prove unbounded simulation soundness, we use a flavor of lossy encryption called R lossy encryption with efficient openings. And this enables us to use, uh, besides injective and lossy keys, we use injective and lossy tags to determine if a ciphertext is lossy or injective. And by using these additional tags, we can actually use the injective mode during the unbounded simulation soundness proof while still being able to run our simulator by using lossy tags. And we also give two flavors of uh, R lossy encryption with efficient opening under learning with errors assumption. Uh, and the second one, which corresponds to the relation induced by an LWE based PRF, uh, this version is used to prove the uh, tight variant of our argument. We can use our compiler to get more efficient LWE based public key encryption schemes that are key dependent message secure against chosen ciphertext attacks. And we do this by instantiating the Nauer Jung transformation under the LWE assumption. First, recall that the primal Regev crypto system that is LWE based is in fact KDM CPA secure. And for our second result, we give a trapdoor sigma protocol that proves that primal Regev encryptions under different public keys uh, encrypt the same message. And we can use this trapdoor sigma protocol to get an unbounded simulation NISEC under the LWE assumption for the same underlying language. And now we are ready to use the Nauer Jung transformation applied to the KDM CPA encryption and this yields a KDM CCA2 encryption under the LWE assumption. And this construction uh, is more efficient because the construction of KDM CCA2 encryption was implied by the result of Pikert and Shen Yan, but to apply their results, we are required to go to, we are required to do transfer um, reductions to some MP-complete language. So our construction is much more efficient. Thank you.